What's up guys, in this session we're going to be using an SQL injection attack to query the type and version of the database that's running. We'll start by taking a quick look at the SQL injection cheat sheet. We're interested in database version and the reason why we have a cheat sheet for SQL injection is simply because there are different iterations of SQL databases that might be running on the back end and certain SQL commands will work on one type of database, whereas they won't work on another database. SQL syntax is very similar across all the different types of databases, but there are some subtle differences. For example, if we wanted to query the database version, if there is Oracle running on the back end, we use this query, select a banner from V dollar version. If it's Microsoft, select at at version. That's the same as MySQL, by the way. And if it's PostgreSQL running, we need to use select version. And many of our other attacks may have a slightly different syntax depending on which database is running. So as part of our reconnaissance, it's a great idea to figure out before we try and launch any SQL injection attacks, which database is actually running on the back end. Now, spoiler alert, we're going to start by saying that it is actually Oracle running on the back end, but we want to prove that with an SQL injection attack. So we're going to be making use of the zap proxy to proxy traffic. Hopefully you appreciate the irony of using zap proxy to help us solve a burp academy lab. Obviously burp is another type of proxy. Both of these tools essentially do the same thing with some variations in their functionality. But we can also solve this lab using zap proxy. So we have traffic successfully being proxied through zap and we're interested in these categories because they are vulnerable to SQL injection. So if we just check out this particular request, let's send it to the request editor. So we have our URL, we have the beginning of the query string, and we have the param category, which has the value accessories because we've just clicked on the link accessories. Now this is actually vulnerable to SQL injection. Let's just demonstrate that we are going to launch attack with a closing single quote and we'll say union select and we're just going to select some arbitrary strings so let's select abc comma def from now one of the quirks of the oracle databases we have to specify a table they're extracting the data from even though we're not really extracting data we are just pulling through arbitrary strings here but we know that one of the tables that always exists in oracle is the dual table and we of course want to finish our attack with a closing comment. So let's send that to the back end, and let's just render the response in the browser just so we're not trawling through raw HTML. And we can have a look at the products that have been returned. If we scroll down to the bottom, we see apparently there's a product with the name ABC and the description is DEF. Obviously these are not a real product. This is indicating that we have a successful SQL injection attack. Now we want to think about finding the version of the database. So let's see if we can modify our attack. We're going to go back to the request and instead of selecting ABCDEF, let's head back to our cheat sheet. We actually want to select banner from V dollar version. So let's see if we can execute that. So instead of ABC, we're going to select banner. These percent twenties are just the encoded spaces. So going to select the banner, let's just leave that string in place from instead of dual, we obviously want the name V dollar version. So going to put V dollar version in there. Okay, let's send that. Let's see what we get. So just pulling our lab back up, we get the flag saying that we have in fact solved the lab. But of course we want to see the output. We want to see what was returned by that SQL injection attack. So once again, let's render the response in the browser. Let's scroll down. In fact, we don't even need to scroll down so we can see core 11.2.0.2.0 production. So that's the version of Oracle that's running. How do we know it's Oracle that's running? It doesn't say it's Oracle. Well, think about the syntax we used in the SQL injection attack. If it wasn't Oracle, then we wouldn't get this response back because our syntax wouldn't be valid. So we know it's an Oracle database and we know the version of the database that's running. 